Hi, I'm Jennifer Barton. I work at the University of Arizona. There, I'm a professor of biomedical engineering and the interim director of the Bio5 Institute. The Bio5 Institute promotes collaborative interdisciplinary biosciences work. So anything that involves more than two or even three colleges, we help promote. We bring people together from across the campus. For instance, looking at ways that advances in plant sciences might be used to help combat cancer and other widely disparate uh, groups. We help get them together. Uh, we provide seed funding. We help bring in great faculty, and basically we work together to solve the grand challenges in biosciences. One of the techniques that we work on is optical coherence tomography. That's a depth resolved imaging technology that has a few micron resolution. Therefore, we can look at changes in tissue architecture that are occurring with early cancer. The other things that we work on are fluorescent spectroscopy. Those two modalities complement each other because OCT mostly looks at structural changes. Fluorescent spectroscopy mostly looks at metabolic and functional changes. And together between the two, we're developing techniques that have high sensitivity and specificity to early cancer. I started working with a group in the high-risk clinic in gynecological oncology and discovered just this entirely huge unmet need particularly for uh, women who are at high risk of ovarian cancer, uh, really such high risk that they right now counseled to just simply have their ovaries and fallopian tubes removed. Uh, if these women wish to delay having that happen until maybe after childbearing years or maybe um, at the point they would go through menopause, they need to have some way of assessing the health of their bodies and knowing that they are cancer free. And so we saw a really good match between the technology that we were developing in optical coherence tomography, fluorescence spectroscopy, and that particular clinical need. And so it's a good thing when the technology and the clinical need come together and there's a great match. And one of the things that our lab specializes in is building miniature endoscopes. Because with these techniques, you need to get close to the tissue you're imaging. We picked a really big challenge in ovarian cancer since the ovaries are one of the most difficult organs to access. But it turns out if you build a small enough endoscope, something smaller than a millimeter, you can actually access the ovaries through the fallopian tubes. So one of the techniques that we work on in my lab is figuring out how to miniaturize, how to put these techniques into fiber optics, and then how to access difficult to reach organs in the body. We've shown on a tabletop and with hand-built prototypes that we can build these miniature endoscopes. And we've shown that we can see the differences between normal and cancerous tissues. We have a couple of things we need to do before this technique can be widely adopted in the clinic. The first is that we have to go beyond a one-off that a graduate student can build in the laboratory into something that's manufacturable. And that involves an entire skill set of people, engineering skills, manufacturing skills, uh, that we need to bring in with partners. And so that's one thing we're looking at right now, is, is how do you get materials that are reasonably priced, that are reliable, sterilizable, all those types of things that you need for a commercial instrument as opposed to a prototype. The other hurdle that we need to get over is the fact that when you have samples in the laboratory, you're catching only a small percentage of the diversity that will present itself in the clinic. We're looking for early ovarian cancer. Well, people don't completely understand what early ovarian cancer looks like. Unfortunately, most of the time when you see ovarian cancer patients, it's late stage. So once we get these prototypes built, we need to go in and conduct a pretty extensive pilot clinical study to take a look and see what truly is happening in the patient population out there. What really are those signatures of early ovarian cancer? And make sure that our techniques and the algorithms that we've designed um, to differentiate normal from cancerous tissues really work once you're um, presented with an actual patient population. This is a great example of where the Bio5 Institute can help researchers like myself when bringing together not just the engineering expertise, but the, the clinicians who see these patients with local bio industry in Arizona that is interested in helping to bring these prototypes to market.